Richardson are taking a branded approach to business with their Avalon Organic, Avalon Genetics and Avalon Farming brands. They aim to offer high performance, low input systems for conventional farmers, as well as providing advice and support for farmers wanting to make the move to organics. On their own farm of rolling to steep hill country in Heriot, West Otago, they carry 15 and a half over 310 hectares in organics. Another 200 hectares are in the process of conversion. In addition, 800 hectares are farmed conventionally. We're virtually running two separate farms on that 500 hectares, and that adds to the management hassles. We've got to keep them separate. There's a line between the two farms. Um, stock can't move between them unless we document it and they haven't had any chemical treatments before they go into the organic and they're emptied out and quarantined and all that sort of drama. So there's a lot more work in it, and certainly once we convert them to 500 hectares, the whole farm, it'll make management a lot easier. Back 17 years ago, we made the de decision to start breeding for worm resistance. Let's see if we can get an animal that can perform without the chemical drenches and still have the production. And that to, to us made sense even back then. The next thing that spurred me on was a, a Kellogg's leadership course in, in 97. And, you know, the three or four speakers there hammered away about this potential for organics. And I was like anyone else, um, organics to me didn't mean anything. But these guys were talking about the potential oh, demand yes. for organic products. So I did my project on it and, and the figures stacked up. So based on that, we converted a, a 35 hectare block of land to organic, started farming it organically. And um, the wheels didn't fall off. And from there, it's expanded. In 98, I won a Nuffield scholarship and uh, that allowed Sonia and I to travel overseas and, and study organic production and marketing. And um, really, organics is it's not a happening thing in New Zealand. Um, the big market is the world market. You're, you're looking at a 48 billion market two years ago. It's growing at 20 or 30% per, per year. So that's the big time. And the future for us is certainly the export market. Why are we in organics? Because um, we're making more money out of it. For us, it's a commercial decision. We get a marketing opportunity out of organics if we do it right. And at the end of the day, our bottom line is better. These are uh, organic perennial stud ewes, got about 800 in total. We tag at birth, because um, if you don't get them in about the first six hours, they're pretty hard to track down. We're farming organically, so we haven't got the, the chemicals to protect them against um, lice and worms like your traditional stud, so they're under maximum pressure. Because they're under maximum pressure, we can actually, um, uh, we get more variation, and we want that variation. We, we want to find out who the winners and the losers are and make sure that we don't breed from the losers. So we've got a very worm-resistant flock here. There's a correlation between worm resistance and facial eczema and grass staggers. And some of our, our private research with, um, with lice and fly, there seems to be some those ones too. So in effect, we've got a, a multi-disease resistant animal. The Richardson's organic operation is certified under agri-quality standards that include a two-year conversion period. Putting on natural fertilisers and um, natural products for animal health. So it, it's a transition, but for us, the most the, the no drenching. What we're actually doing, we're improving a lot of the trace element level in our soil. The NPKs have stabilised. And, you know, I think that a lot of fertiliser in New Zealand is applied due to the Olsen P based on, on one specific soil type in New Zealand, and it's used for any soil in New Zealand. And what we're finding is that you don't have to operate in a 20 or 30 or 40 P to get good performance, as long as the balance is there between your major and your minor elements. For me, farming starts in the soil, doesn't start in, in the grass. And, and just have a look at the, you know, the structure here. That soil just breaks up in your hands. It's beautifully aerated. There's roots all through it. And also, just the earthworms that are are there. We've had up to 80 worms per spadeful, so that tells me that the soil's alive with microbes. And for me, that's just sustainable. You know, if we've got that, um, we're getting a transfer of, of fertility, a breakdown of organic matter, and it's, um, that's where our, our fertility comes from. It doesn't come out of a, a bag. Part of what we're doing in the Avalon farming systems are low input systems, and one of the key things there has been the probe test that we've been using it now. And it's a, a silica-based, a lime-based product, but it seems to have the ability to unlock 
some of the, the minerals that are locked up in the soil and we're getting very good results out of our, the herbage samples that we're getting so we're getting a good balance in, in the trace and the major elements. The benefits um, flow right through to the meat. My butcher can actually tell the difference between our meat and conventional meat that goes through his shop now and it has a better colour, better texture and probably the most important thing of all it, it's lasting twice as long. We're farming out organic and our conventional farms at the same stocking rate. Our performance is actually increasing after seven years we'd be starting to see that. What we're actually seeing is production's increasing. Pasture, the meat products, the wool that we get off the farm, all those things are increasing and um, that for me is exciting. What it says to me is we've got a sustainable system here and for the long term, not just the short term. Ellen also uses homeopathy as a remedy for the organic stock. It may look like a bit of witchcraft, but it's actually using a homeopathic treatment. And we've got hoggets that have come out of the winter and they're, they're coughing and sputtering and it's a, it's a great sign of pneumonia. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting 10 for that and into the trough and they're ingesting that over the, the three days that they get it. And we've had great results. Probably the, the one that's most graphic is actually the wormer that we use for, for internal parasites. Um, because we've, we've got a feet pack, we can actually measure um, effect levels on their animals before and after by just giving them a, a drench of the, the homeopathic remedy. Ten drops every day. Uh, we're dropping the effect levels down by 70%. We've been doing it for six months now. The results we've had so far are really good, but it, yeah, by no means a guarantee yet. What we're trying to do here with our Avalon farming systems, we want a, a low input system, a, a natural system, and, and the homeopathic of um, the chemical uh, alternative and there's certainly far more the resistance or the, the residue problems that we have and um, if, if we want to be true about this clean green image which we all believe in and as part of who we are in New Zealand um, we've actually got to back that up and um, some of these systems I think are going to have an important part to play in the future. Alan's wife Sonia also believes in the principles of organics. When I first met Alan, he had done the Kellogg's leadership um, course and was quite keen on organics and, and just, um, I guess, from my nursing background, you know, dealing with a lot of cancer patients, I'd sort of, um, I guess, come to the thought that, um, you know, there's got to be more to, to life than all the processed foods that we've got. We were thinking about um, eventually having a family and thinking, you know, how are we going to bring these kids up? They're on a farm and we want to do the best we can for them. So, yeah, organics was the a logical step and so we're trying to eat as much organic as we can and um, yeah doing the farming thing. The big picture for us is that we've got a high performance low input system which um, we're developing we think in combination with our Avalon genetics could enable conventional farmers to um, either reduce their, their costs or perhaps go the whole way and, and go organic and um, if we can take the risk out of people converting and um, give them the systems so that they can do it successfully. Um, mm. And the, the bottom line there is take their product and market it under the Avalon brand. If we can do that and, um, and supply them a, a premium for their wool, for their lamb, their mutton and their beef, um, I think we've got something special. That's, that's the master plan, that's the vision that we have for Avalon.